boosters and other big back to school issues that are happening probably in your neighborhood affecting the teachers, students, staff, parents, everybody. I spoke with Randy Weingarten just before the FDA took this vote. She's the president of the American Federation of Teachers, has 1.7 million members. Randy, you have supported vaccine mandates for teachers. You took some flack for that. If the FDA, and that's an if, the FDA and CDC give final approval to boosters, do you support booster mandates for teachers? So, you know, this is part of the protocol for the vaccines. I think the, I think that the real question becomes that lots of people who have already had the vaccines or the full, you know, both complements of it, if the FDA supports boost boosters, um, I think everybody who has actually had Pfizer or Moderna is going to rush to get a booster. I think that the real issue becomes who should get a booster and when, and is this a three-shot vaccine or two? You know, I, I think what's happened is that um, because the vaccines um, have been, you know, in 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 normal times are viewed as so, you know, done so fast, we really have to rely on, you know, what the scientists are saying as opposed to, you know, 10 years of human experience. So let me just say for the record, I'm 63 years old. I want my life to be as normal as possible. I've been spending like the last six weeks with masks and I was gonna get my mask with masks, with, you know, with all the kind of protocols, but those vaccines, have kept me and my partner really safe as I've been able to do my job. And as soon as I can get a booster is as soon as I'm gonna get it. Am I hearing you say that if the FDA says, this is just gonna be a matter of course, every eight months, you're gonna to have to get boosted if you have Pfizer or Moderna or eventually Johnson & Johnson, that if, if they add that on as a mandate, that you're okay with that? Absolutely. And I, I think that the real issue is gonna be just the people, you know, we, in, in our union, 90% of our membership from paraprofessionals and bus drivers to um, college professors, inclusive of nurses and teachers, 90% of them got the vaccine on a voluntary basis. If we had that the rest of the country, I think that we would not have a pandemic of the unvaccinated right now in terms of Delta or anything else that comes up. My job is not only to help open schools and create the safe and welcoming conditions and, you know, and, 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 and help our kids recover, but we're educators and we have to educate people about the efficacy and the safety of the vaccines and to debunk the myths. AFT is not just teachers. We love teachers, they're very important, but you also represent people like bus drivers. There is a right. huge shortage of bus drivers in this country. Massachusetts is calling in the National Guard to deal with buses. Philly's considering it, or maybe Amazon. In mid-Missouri, I've been talking to friends and family there, some kids, they're small. They're on the bus for up to two hours to go one mile because they're con combining, you know, three routes. Right, it's all How bad. How do you get, you know, bus drivers? So let me just say that this actually started when, you know, COVID started and they just laid off all the bus drivers. Like not all of them, but they laid off, you know, that this is part of the reason why we needed those COVID packages to keep, you know, we kept on screaming that the, that the, that the, you know, that all these layoffs were gonna hurt us at one point or another. Mm -hmm. So now you're seeing the layoffs of bus drivers, people got new jobs. They don't want to leave their new jobs to go back to their old jobs. You know, what would you, I mean, on some levels, would you, if you don't have the kind of sense that I'm, you know, that I have some uh, sense of security. So mm -hmm. we, we've seen this bus driver shortage since the end of last school year. And, you know, what we have to do is you just have to pay people more. Like you have to pay people a living wage and we'll get the bus drivers. I mean, that's the bottom line. And, and that's what we need to do. What's happened is the places that have done the safety protocols, the places where you have lots of people vaccinated who can get vaccinated, and then they have the safety protocols of masks, of ventilation, of, you know, outbreak control testing, 
they're not having very many outbreaks. There'll be some, but this really is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. And so, you know, we got to protect our kids who are 12 and under. We got to get as many kids who are 12 and over, over vaccinated. Lots of places are now saying to their athletes, you want to play athletics? Get a vaccine. And, but the joy, what I've seen in the last six weeks in the, you know, 25, 30 places I've been in, the joy is palpable about wanting to have our kids back to school. And that's what I'm holding. I'm so glad you say the joy is palpable among teachers and staff to get the kids back in school. And students. One of our producers on the show, um, his girlfriend is a teacher, and she said really the hardest part at this point is dealing with all the messages from parents who are upset about things like masks and, and things of that sort, which are really decided by local and state leaders. What do you say to teachers that are in that tough spot? Look, that's part of the reason that we wrote months and months ago to the CDC saying, don't make us be the mass police. We don't want to be the mass police. And why we teachers. it's- Teachers. Yeah, we want to be teachers. We don't, but it is important because of the Delta virus, we have to follow what the pediatricians and what the CDC has said, which is for the moment, mask up. You know, is it going to be forever? The moment that we can actually contain the Delta virus, and we have kids under 12 able to be vaccinated, I bet we'll be able to take our mask off, just like, you know, in May, um, you know, CDC thought we had conquered the virus enough that if you were vaccinated, you could take your mask off. So right now, we got a mask up. That's what protects ourselves, and that's what protects our kids. This is a, schooling is a community responsibility, and that's why we took the position, let's mask up everywhere. Um, and, and when we conquer Delta, when we beat Delta, we can take the damn mess off. Randy Weingarten, president of AFT, which is a good reminder today, it's not just teachers, it's bus drivers. We don't want kids on buses for two hours and showing up exhausted to class. Thank you so no. much, Randy. Thank you.